All right, what's up, guys? Here's another video with your boy Poke from Apex Adventures. Today we're not going to do anything with Apex, but we are going to have a little bit of those adventures because it's not just all about Apex. Today we're going to do board games. Um, so I'm going to talk about my top 32 board games that I've played. Um, this is basically every board game that I've played, not counting Risk, Castle Risk. I did forget to put on Hero Clicks onto the list. It would be somewhere on here. I'm not sure where, but I did forget to put that on. Um, so I'll probably add that on next year. Um, but check out that game as well. Um, also, I want to talk to you about my 2020 goals. Um, so uh, this year, I'm going to change some things up with my channel. I want to start doing things like this um, and everything like that. So uh, I'm going to be talking about board games a lot more. Do some board game reviews because it's going to be awesome. Also, I'm going to go to Gen Con and I'm going to try to get some videos for with Gen Con and everything like that. I'm also going to go to PAX Unplugged. I already have that scheduled and ready to go. I know I'm jumping into a lot of things and it's going to be brand new, but I'm really excited. I'm already planning to buy the badges and the tickets and the events and everything like that. And hopefully your boy Poke can go up to some of those other people there that I really want to meet um, and get some autographs or just meet them in general because it would be really cool to meet you know the Dice Tower and some of the other big game uh, people in board gaming and everything like that and just in uh, all the different genres out there uh, the Dice Tower is just one I could name a million for you right now because I I am subscribed to probably every single one of them on YouTube so you know it's a big community and I'm just hoping to meet as many people as possible because I just I, I want to be a big part of the community but let's go ahead and get into this list um, and we'll go from there so at my number 32 spot I do have the Simpsons trivia game it's one of the games that um, I was super excited to get when it came out. Um, unfortunately, when I bought it, eh, okay, so there's like a minute trivia game, and then there's like the hardcore trivia game. It's one of those hardcore ones where it's like, oh, I want you to know like this specific line from this movie or from this show on this episode, like 15 minutes in. And like, yeah, I'm not going to remember that. Or what's the vase in the background while they're talking? not going to remember that so um that's why it's at my number 32 i literally have to watch the simpsons seasons like the one time i wanted to play it i actually watched through all the seasons to try to get it yeah that didn't what happened um my number uh 31 spot is small world surprisingly it's actually this low because the first time that i played it and the only time that i played it because these are all the games i played besides you know brisk and all them i had a really negative experience but i'm hoping to replay it and have a good time with it i just had a really bad time with it so i don't know i don't know if it was like i wasn't understanding the mechanics very well or what was going on but i just did not like it um or it could have just been a game i don't like um also number 30 mage knight i had a horrible time with that game I know that it's a super good solo event, uh, experience, and I'm ready to get back into it because I know that it's a good game. I just had a horrible experience with it, and I haven't touched it since. It's actually sitting back there on my shelf, um, but and I will get back into it. I just have to take the time to learn the rules because the situation that I was in, and this is the reason. So before anybody comments saying, hey, it was just because of that reason, I know it's because of that reason, but uh, I was given the rule book and told, teach three other people had to play this in like 10 minutes so yeah that didn't happen um next is a uh, five minute dungeon you can actually catch this game at walmart it's five minutes to play literally um well a little bit more because there are pauses that you can take um it's a really nice game comes in a kind of box like this big it's pretty nice um but i'm not into that whole really fast in your face five minute thing not my thing so that's why it's so far down there magic the gathering the board game is basically um hero clicks uh i haven't played that in a very long time hero clicks um if i did i would have put it on my list somewhere probably really close to the top um when i get that game again i will put it back on my list but until i get that game um i need to have a re-experience with it just to make sure i still like it um but magic the gathering it's hard to get it to the table is the main part um i love it but some of my friends don't so it's really hard to get to the table 
Um, next is actually this game. I do have a couple of games for you guys to see. It's Bears versus Babies. I'm. Uh, it's a pretty nice game. Um, has like this really nice felt map mat to like put things on it's a very uh interesting game and it's definitely fuzzy as you can probably tell um and again this is found at walmart um pretty uh, it's a pretty nice game not one of my favorites though um probably gonna eventually well not eventually it'll probably fall off the list this year especially when i go to gen con try all those new games out then it is halo the board game it's basically your it feels like you're actually playing halo uh, the video game, uh, which is really nice. Um, you can only pick up certain weapons if you're the Covenant or if you're um, the um, Army. So it's really nice to be able to play that game, and it's really fun. Next is, as anybody who knows me personally would know, Magic the Gathering. Because I play Commander. I used to play a little bit of Standard. Don't really play that too much. I play those dual decks. You name it. I play it. I'm not like a big competitive person, but I like to play that game, and it's a lot of fun. Um, and you can do a lot of things with those decks. This is probably going to go up my list. I just kind of, sometimes you just hit a barrier with magic, and it's just, I, I need a break from it. So right now it's kind of falling down the list for me, in my opinion. So it's probably going to go right back up. Next is Shay Geek. It's one of those games where you put together a little room, like you're in a uh, uh, an apartment with other um you know people who live in that apartment with you and you are trying to make your room the best room it's a light game doesn't have a lot of rules and it's basically just make your room the best and you get as much slack as possible really cool game really simple now my next game formula d is my 22 why formula d is my 22 I really like the game, it's a lot of fun, but it's really hard, hard to get to the table, and it's it's a lot of dice chucking that a lot of people were like, uh, I don't know if I want to play a game, a racing game based on dice chucking. I do want to check out some of those other games that are out there, like Snow Dogs, I heard is a really good game, and uh, a few other ones, so I want to test those out and see what they're like. Next is my 21, which is Munchkin. I have the um, special um, artist edition, which is really nice. Um, but I just like Munchkin and the shenanigans of kicking down a door, fighting the thing behind it, and everything like that. Um, I haven't played this a lot. Um, I like the game, but I don't really... It's not one of the ones like, I want to play this every single day. So it's, it's, again, kind of falling down my list a little bit. So it might eventually pop off. Now, Legendary is a ginormous game that is absolutely amazing. It's a deck-building game that you do with your friends. It's semi-cooperative, and I don't believe that it should be semi-cooperative. I'm a very avid person of, like, this is just a cooperative game. There is no semi about it. It's really fun. has a lot of your favorite Marvel characters. I do have one expansion, which is a Deadpool expansion, which is really nice. Um, but again, I can only get it to the table so many times because there's another deck building game coming up that people like a lot more. Um, next is Zombie Dice, which I don't have a little thing here. I do have it over there, but I didn't feel like grabbing it. Basically, you just roll some dice. It's a, it's solely a test your luck kind of game. You're just trying to get brains and 13 brains you win. If you get shot by a shotgun, then you basically give up your turn and lose all the brains. It's a lot of fun. Look, really short, really fun game. Um, next is actually a game I have here. Um, uh, it is Cthulhu Gloom. It's a lot of fun. Um, there are a little bit of extra rules that in this version versus regular Gloom. Um, basically you're trying to make, uh, your people, I consider it like, uh, the Adam Family, the card game. Um, you're trying to make your family as miserable as possible. Um, and, um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, basically, you want them to get stung by bees and everything, but anything that makes them happy is like a no. Um, and then just and then they die, and then whatever points they died with, negative points they died with, uh, that's what you score with uh, is negative points, which is really interesting. Uh, but it does add a couple of extra roll cards, which I'm not a huge fan of. I prefer, actually, speaking of which, the number 16 on my list. Or is it 16? 
Let's see here. No, number 17 on my list, Regular Gloom, which is really nice. As you can see, it says second edition. I do like the second edition one. It is really nice. has lots of nice artwork in it and everything like that. It is a really nice production of Cthulhu. And what I really like about Cthulhu just in general is, let me pull one of these cards out. See, it is see-through. Like, you can see right through that. Like, you can almost see my face. That, okay, maybe you can't. They are a little bit, has that little, like, pale white part to it. But uh, you just put the cards over other cards, and it's really nice. So uh, that is my number 17. My 16 is King of Tokyo. I just love the dice tucking part of that, being able to enter into Tokyo, take it from somebody else, and have them ha have me score some points. Uh, 15, Sheriff of Nottingham. Um, I like the lying or truth aspect to this game. I have won probably, like not even joking, I've won probably six times in a row, and I did it all through. I didn't say a single lie every single game. It's a lot of fun, but you can lie in it, um, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, number 14 is the Red Dragon Inn. This one just slightly beat out Sheriff of Nottingham. I just like the being able to... It's more of a... I guess it's a take that game uh, where you give someone a drink. You're trying to make someone really drunk so they pass out. And I have number two. I was actually planning on buying all of them. Uh, but the way it was described as was number one. But then we ordered number two. So I'm planning on getting the rest of them. Just haven't got there yet. Um, but that's number two. Uh, my number 13 will probably come up to a surprise to a lot of people because it is an older game, but Talisman is a really fun game. It's like D&D &D kind of in a board game, but there's a lot. It is rough. It's not like a, oh, this game's going to take a little bit of time and like there's only a few things. It is rough. You will have a hard time winning that game, but when you do, it feels like it pays off in dividends. It is amazing. My number 12 is Forbidden Island. I really like this game. It's a tile laying game. You put all the tiles down. Well, not laying because you don't lay them, but you lay them down at the beginning of the game, and slowly the island starts getting overswam with all these, uh, all the oceans and everything, and you're trying to get away before the island just disappears or the helipad because that's how you get out of there um unfortunately i have not paid forbidden sky or desert yet um but i am planning on playing those soon because they look like a lot of fun uh, my number 11 is smash up and the reason why number 11 is smash up is because when i first heard about this game it blew my mind uh that you could just throw together any two factions and just play them together and it would do all kinds of crazy combos and everything like that and i was super excited in fact i got so excited about smash up and i kept watching videos about it on youtube and everything like that that i bought every single expansion i got everything except for the limited edition sheep edition and some of the other uh ones i think i get i'm missing like two of the newest ones but that's about it i have every other expansion besides that because i really really love smash up all right guys we are in the top 10 of my favorite board games of all time for this year until next year. My number 10, and I know this kind of counteracts something that I said before, is Zombie 15. There's something about this, the mechanics in it, that makes you go, yes, I'm in a rush, but I am having the greatest time of my life cooperating with my friends and everything like that. It's a zombie game that you have to find your way out to the exit in only 15 minutes real time. And you just have to cooperate with your friends without dying. And it's just a lot of fun. I It's harder to get to the table, um, but it's one of my favorite games because when we do get it to the table, we just have to cooperate and have a good time because if we don't cooperate, you definitely won't make it out of there. My number nine is boss monster this is the last game that i do have for you guys to see it's a nice little game i don't see a lot of people talking about this game unfortunately it's one of those games that i don't know either goes around down a lot of people's radars or what but uh it's a lot of fun you instead of playing as like the adventurer going through the different uh caverns and everything you actually play as the boss itself um, which is really nice. You actually have to kill the adventurers uh, so that you can get points and everything like that to come out on top. 
My number eight is Epic Spell Wars of the Battle Wizards. Duel at Mount Skull's Fire. I know that's a really long name. Basically, you're just playing a whole bunch of spells to kill everybody else at the table. It's a lot of fun. Um, and you just play spells. And they come out with crazy names. And I always have a special rule where the first person, like if I've never played with you, for instance, ever before, I make you read the rule book, like the first two pages, because it has like a little story in your best wizard voice. And it's absolutely hilarious. And then we just go with the uh, really crazy voices, like um, for uh, Krasta, the Blood of Mansa. You got all kinds of crazy different characters. So uh, you definitely want to check that one out. My number seven is Blood Rage. I absolutely love how these little Vikings go around the table and um, they just you just have to take out other people's Vikings or get area control in this one region so you can get uh, points and everything like that. And then you know you can get extra point or extra glory. They call it glory instead of points in that game. You can get extra glory from bringing your people back from Valhalla or getting them sent to Valhalla, and uh, it's really cool. It's really fun, and uh, there's not really a way. I mean, uh, I've seen people that have gotten, like, who I thought were really far behind, and then in the third age, they just catch up, which is really nice. So, my next one, number six, is Clank, or Clank the Mummy's Curse. I don't have anything past that, but uh, Clank has kind of cooled for me a little bit, but adding the Mummy's Curse to it has made it really interesting. There is a little die, the pyramid die that you have to roll, and everything like that. And this is where I was saying that other deck building game kind of kicked Legendary a little bit further down for me, just for the fact of it's really hard to get to the table, because everybody loves Clank. In fact, this year we're planning on getting Clank Legacy, because it looks like a lot of fun. Probably going to be one of those one-time experiences, but will be on my list, more than likely. Uh, the Legacy Edition until it falls off due to it just being, well, I don't know. I guess it kind of depends because um, from what I understand, Clank Legacy, you could play forever. So I'm hoping to get that game and it's going to turn out terrific. Um, we're now on the top five. My number five is Dead of Winter. I just love how this is literally a zombie simulation game and it really feels like you have to claw and rip your way to succeeding if you even succeed sometimes you put so much effort into trying to succeed that you actually fail and on top of that you just someone just smirks around the table and goes yeah i, I actually won <laughs> that wasn't me the last game um my number four cosmic encounter i just love how there's so many asymmet asymmetric aliens that just have a lot of fun. I've only had one time where this game hasn't done so well. Um, and that's because we didn't understand the rules. Um, but this game is really fun. Taking each other's ships. Having a lot of fun. And just destroying each other. Trying to get five other colonies. It's a lot of fun. You guys should really check it out. It's, it's great. My number three. And I kind of put these in the same category for now. But. Betrayal at the House on the Hill. Or Betrayal Legacy. Betrayal Legacy is an absolutely amazing game. If you've never let played Betrayal at the House on the Hill, I should definitely suggest that first, and then try Betrayal Legacy. But these games are absolutely amazing, and I love them. I could play that forever. We're not even the whole way through the Betrayal Legacy game yet, but it is absolutely amazing. And the story that it provides, like you're in the middle of something, and then you'll just have to rip something up, and you're like, what just happened? And we got to uh, rip up our recent room tile the other day, which was crazy. And uh, it is absolutely amazing. Definitely check it out. Now my top two, which I don't think will ever leave my list. I don't even think they'll ever leave the top five. Because they are absolutely 100% amazing. Now my number two is Batman Gotham City Chronicles. I just love this game. It feels like... Uh, it feels like you're in the comic books, ready to kick some butt. They have predetermined um, miniatures and everything like that, which have scenarios, and you just face each other. Good guys versus bad guys, and it is amazing. You're just fighting each other, doing some great things, and I'll have to show you guys the game and how it's played out sometime because it is absolutely amazing. I know, I know it got a lot of bad rep, 
because it is there is a lot of rules and unfortunately the way the rules are laid out especially with the little icon the icon don't have an explanation on them but i think this is one of the best fighting good versus bad games out there and me and my play group have had so much fun playing it and we can't wait to play some more of it and now my number one game of all time which may never leave number one because i love it that much twilight imperium fourth edition i just absolutely love this game i can't wait to get it to the table i probably play it every or at least i did play it every single or every other saturday we would have a group that would play it every other saturday and it was just a lot of fun we took 10 day 10 hours to set aside each day just to make sure that we could play it every saturday and we would make a little trip at around like i don't know somebody would get about halfway point wise five to seven points and then be like all right what are we going to do for lunch you know we would go somewhere come back play some more and it would just be like a big shindig and it would be a lot of fun just to do all that stuff and it was just great being able to get your own race and everything like that and having your special powers and doing all these crazy things we liked it so much that now me and my friends have decided that once we hit so many games of twilight imperium we're then going on reddit and all these other places to find other homebrew races just to try out other races tweak them and make them being able to be part of the game so that we have even more variety in the game because we haven't gotten an expansion yet so we want to try out some new things that's how much we love the game is we just want to try all these new things and it is absolutely amazing and we are absolutely enamored by this game but that is my top 32 board games so far until i get some more this year and go to gen con and pack some plug hopefully i can try out all these other games meet with a whole bunch of people and just have a great time so check us out soon we're going to be doing lots of videos of board games lots of gen con and pack some plug videos and a whole bunch more because Apex Adventures is broadening her, its horizons into a whole new nerd genre. So I hope you're prepared. I will catch you guys in the next video. Get ready. Because we're all legends and legends never die.